There was and there was not. It's how Georgian fairy tales start. In Georgian, it's Iko Tara Ikora. It's our version of Once Upon a Time. I am mathematician by training, spent 20 years in business leadership, and now uh, teach management. And yet, I came today to talk about the fairy tales. Because I have four very difficult questions on my mind, and I wanted to share these questions with you. First, may the fairy tales be much more important than they seem? Second, may the fairy tales affect all aspects of our lives, like family, education, business, even politics and economy? Then the third question would be, do we need to change our fairy tales? And finally, the ultimate question is, can such change help us for our own fairy tale to have a very happy end? Organizers have told me that there are around 300 people in this room. They've also told me that most of you have been children in the past. <laughs> is this true? Have you been children? Do you remember? You must have loved your fairy tales and cartoons as much as I did. There was one favorite cartoon of mine. It was called Watermelon. Most of you remember it. I loved it. The story has two main characters. One, lazy, drunk, sleeping, fat, winemaker. And another one, happy, fit, singing, wealthy, watermelon farmer. So message seems clear. It's up to you to decide who you want to be. Do you want to work hard and achieve most? Or do you want to spend the rest of a li your life laying on your back, right? But it looks like there's much more to this story than we see on the surface. I found out that in the year that I was born, in 1973, authorities of Soviet Georgia were fighting a quiet war in Kacheti, in eastern Georgia. What they wanted was to eliminate winemaking as one of the authentic cores of Georgian culture. And they wanted, so they ordered the collective farms to get rid of wine yards and plant watermelons instead. But population of Kacheti stood against the change. So authorities had to stop pushing and had to find other way. In few months, this cartoon hits the screens. So it has it all. It has beautiful Georgian singing. It has nice fable, great scenery, but still it is an ideological tool aimed at children, at future farmers of Kacheti to hate vineyards and love watermelon. This got us thinking, may there be May other Georgian tales be hiding something. I love this country. I want to make it better. I even decided to spend the rest of my life educating Georgians through a nonprofit training center. But in our everyday work, we face worst enemy of all. It's our limiting beliefs its wrong values, its ethical issues. It seems like something is preventing our people from working their ha very hard to achieve their best. Something deep down in their minds. We thought, may there be something in our fairy tales. May it be that Georgian fathers and mothers every day plant seeds of wrong ideas in the clear and cute heads of their children. So we wanted to find out. We went on and surveyed a few hundred 
managers at the Management Academy. We wanted to find out top fairy tales and top characters of Georgian fairy tales, which these people remembered. Again and again, in every survey we, we did, same four characters kept popping out. So today, I decided to introduce these four fairy tales and these four characters to you. Of course, only foreigners in an uh, audience will need the introduction because all Georgians need them, uh, know them by heart. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce heroes of Georgian Fairy tales. Natsar Kekia, the first one. The lazy man who was thrown out of his own house by his own family, who then used lies and deception to trick the mythical giant, Devi, and to take hold of his possessions, of his palace and his property. One, once he became rich again, family rejoined him and they live happily together. Do you know such people around you? Do you know the lazy people who try to build their lives, their careers on lies and deception? Do you know people who try to steal somebody else's property? Unfortunately, I do. Another introduction is Comble, the shepherd with only three sheep, not 30 or 100, just three. And he spends every day of his life cutting the shepherd crooks, the wooden fighting instrument used by shepherds, and he's stalking the shepherd crooks. And one day, one of his three sheep disappeared and that's when Comble needs all his armament. He goes out to the wood, finds the wolf that ate its ship, kills it, and returns the ship home. The story ends with great news that he still has three sheep. <laughs> but nobody dares to mess with them. Do you know these people? Do you know people who, instead of working hard to multiply their flock, are f spending their lives fighting with others, trying to protect their honor, trying to protect their property. Unfortunately, I do. Another important character is a mythical bull, Tsikara, who helps his young friend escape from an angry stepmother. As they are running from the chase throughout the story, magical things happen. Sea appears from the mirror. Forest appears from the hair comb. The boy does nothing apart from listening to his friend and doing what he says. Do you know these guys? Do you know people who choose to solely depend on others? Do you know people for, who wait for the miracle to save them? Have you heard that NATO will save us? <laughs> Have you heard that all economic problems are caused by one man? Have you heard that the other man will solve them all? Right? That's all from here. Unfortunately, I have heard a lot of it. Next ones. Our friends, the ant and the flea, who decide to go somewhere and they come across the ditch and they have to jump. So flea jumps over and the ant apparently miscalculates own capabilities, tries to jump and falls into the ditch. That's when it's up to flea to save his troubled friend. So he starts going to the forest. And that's the most interesting part. Nothing in the whole wide wood helps him for free. <laughs> Nothing, nor a tree, nor an animal does anything without asking for something in return. Do you know the ants who jump before they think? Do you know the forest which doesn't help anyone for free? 
Unfortunately, I do. This whole thing looks overly familiar to what happens around me, to the bad things that happen around me look much familiar <clears throat> to these fairy tales. It may look very pessimistic. My view may look very pessimistic. Of course, I do see positive side of Georgian fairy tales. Of course, I do see friendship and commitment and love and care, right? But we may need to concentrate on overcoming negative aspects to achieve growth and prosperity. I thought a lot about how to complete this talk, about how, what the calls for action could be. And I came out with four calls. One is to Georgian parents. Please think before telling the fairy tales to your children. Please think what you will rise in them. I know that a lot of people around me and in this audience have already started doing this. Second call would be to artists uh, to work on fairy tales. Please work on children's literature. We may need new tales and new heroes. Third call would be to officials in education and art. Please find ways to support development of new children's literature, of the animated movies. And the fourth call would be to all Georgians and to you, people in this audience. And that would be to listen to your inner voices, to recognize the heroes advising you, and to try to stand your ground. And in the end of my talk, I want to take an oath, and I want to ask you to join me in taking this oath. I promise to fight, fight Nazar Kekia in myself by not being lazy, by not lying, by not deceiving people, and by not trying to take over somebody else's property. I promise to find comble in myself, not to use force, physical or psychological, to impose my opinions and my decisions on others. I promise to fight boy from Tsikara. I, I will try to not to wait for the miracle to save me. I will try to do my best to achieve what I can achieve in this life. And finally, I will, I promise to find, fight ant within me, to think before I jump not to become a heavy load on my friends. And I promise to fight the wood by helping people in need, by uh, giving back to the community. And that's exactly, by the way, what we saw during the last week. And if this all happens, my friends, if we make it true, then, we, then the miracle will, have, will happen. And we will magically wake up one day in the country that we all want and deserve. And I want to leave you today with standard ending of a Georgian fairy tale. Katoika, Kwiliaka, Chiriika, Khiniaka. Thank you.